Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a lifestyle. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Now, we're continuing our study through the story of the Bible, but before we begin this morning, let me ask you a question. What is your most prized possession? Material, family, money? What do you prize more than anything? If someone came and took everything you own, down to the last sock, your last pair of shoes, your last bit of money, or even a family member, what is the one thing that you would cherish and hold on to more than anything that you own? Well, friends, you may consider this frank and even hurtful, but it is the truth. If your most prized possession is not the written word of God, then you are missing something very vital and critical in your relationship with God. You see, outside of the fact that God has given himself unto men, offered himself unto men through his person, the Lord Jesus, through his spirit, the Holy Ghost, the greatest gift that he has given to us is the word of God. And yet so often it sits on the shelf collecting dust. If there will be anything in the kingdom, the new kingdom when Jesus reigns, known as sorrow, it will come from two things, friends. Wasted opportunities where we have had chance to tell others of the love that Jesus offers unto them. And second, of unspent time in the word of God. It is my prayer through this ministry that that is the one thing that you walk away with. A passion, a love, a desire, and a need for the word of God in your life. Well, with that being said, friends, we are just a few days before the end of the month, and if you have been with us in our reading schedule of five chapters a day, you have just finished or about to complete reading the New Testament in the last 60 days. I finished last night, so I'll spend the remainder of this month going back and rereading the book of 2 Corinthians and maybe one or two of Paul's letters. If you too have completed the New Testament, and are ready to begin afresh on January 1st, leave a comment below. I'd love to know what this experience has done for you. Well, when we were last together, we finished at Genesis chapter 15, and we were looking at the life of Abraham and the cultivation of the relationship that is taking place with him and his new God, Yahweh, the Almighty One, the Most High, He who has no beginning and will have no end. And as we see Abraham's relationship strengthening, we left off when God told Abraham, I am thy shield in Genesis chapter 15 verse 1. I am thy exceeding great reward. And then he tells Abraham that he's going to become an heir unto many people. He says in verse 5, Abram, look now toward heaven. Count the stars if you will be able to number them. Even as you see the stars in the sky, so shall thy seed be. Now this would appear to be promising news from Abram. Yet God has a surprise. He's going to tell Abram something, but he puts Abram into a deep sleep. Notice in verse 12, he says, When the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. Why? Because God's about to tell Abram the future of his people. Now, as we read this, recount the story of Moses, because that's what God is speaking to. Now, notice in verse 13, he said unto Abram, Know of a surety, Abram, that your seed, your children, those to come from you, will be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and they shall serve the people who rule that land. And those people shall afflict your children for 400 years. And as they serve these people, I will judge them. And afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Now again, recall the story of Moses. Moses arrives on the scene. The people have been in bondage for 400 years. Heavy slavery, intense persecution. 
Yahweh delivers them through the hand of Moses, and when they leave Egypt, they leave with great substance. And even to this day, Egypt holds that against Israel because they want what Israel took from them. Yet Israel didn't take it. Egypt freely gave it up to get them out of the city. Now he says unto Abram in verse 15, even though this is devastating news for you, you will go to your fathers in peace. His fathers would be Adam, Enoch, and other great patriarchs of the faith up until this point. And in verse 18, he says, Abram, unto your seed I've given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Now notice this, the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Rephiams, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. Now, do you remember in chapter 10, in verse 9, or actually verse 8, it says, Cush begat Nimrod. Now, Nimrod, in verse 6, is of the sons of Ham. Ham is the one that was cursed because of what he did to his father Noah. In verse 10, it says the beginning of Nimrod's kingdom was Babel, which will later become Babylon. And then in verse 15, it says, And Canaan begat Sidon his firstborn and Heth. And notice, the Jebusite, the Amorite, the Gergesite, the Hivite, the Archite, the Arvidite, the Zimurite, the Hamathite. And so we see that these nations came from the seed of Ham, who was a cursed people. Now Yahweh tells Abram here in Genesis 15, 18 through 21, that the land before him is going to be his, but it's going to have to be conquered. And it will be conquered by his heirs, by the sons who come after him. And who will they be conquering? The very descendants of Ham himself. And so this is a prophecy to Abraham that although the seed that comes from you will be mighty on the earth in number, they will not be mighty in the significance that they hold among the nations. They will be servants unto those nations. They will be slaves. Well, as we enter chapter 16, the storyline shifts back to Sarai. And in verse 16, it says, Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children. But she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto thy maid, so I may bear children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. So it seems as if Abram and Sarai are going to attempt to help Yahweh in bringing forth the heir. Now remember, God has told Abram that he will have heirs from his seed. So maybe, I say maybe, in his mind, even though he has a child with Sarai's handmaid, Hagar, it would still be from his seed. Because up until this point, I don't believe that the message has been given to Sarai that she will be the mother of the promised one. So just as when Abram told Sarai to say that she was his sister, so that he would not be killed, that wasn't necessarily a lie because Sarai was his half-sister. And so in the same voice of reasoning here, Abram isn't completely defying what God has told him because if Hagar does become pregnant, it will be from his seed. Now verse 3 tells us that the reason they did this was because they were becoming a little bit impatient on waiting upon God. It says, Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. So ten years had gone by since the initial promise from Yahweh. And Abram went into Hagar, and she did conceive. Her mistress was despised in her eyes. So Sarai says unto Abraham, It was wrong of me to ask this of thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom, and when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. And so Abram says unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleases thee. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. 
Now the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to Shur. And he said unto her, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence do you come? From where do you come? And where are you going? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarai. And so the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return unto your mistress, and submit yourself under her hands. Do not rebel against her, even though what she puts upon you may be hard to endure, but submit unto her. That is what God asks of you. And that's what he asks of us too, friends. Rebellion comes from the heart of the evil one. Submission, whether those that we are submitting to are wrong or right, we are still to have submissive spirits in accordance with what God has commanded. And so the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply your seed exceedingly. Now Yahweh is giving her a promise that from her children will become a great number of people as well. And the angel of the Lord continued to speak with her in verse 11 and said, Behold, you are with child. You will bear a son and you will call his name Ishmael, which simply means Elohim will hear. Elohim is the name for God. Now Ishmael in verse 12 will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man and every man's hand against him. Now this isn't a prophecy that a mother would want to hear about her child, that her child is going to be a man of war and constantly at war. And not just her child, but the descendants of that child. And it is through the seed of Ishmael that the Muslim nations have derived. And even before they were Muslim in faith, they still rejected the faith of the Jewish people. And so they were always at war with one another, the Jews and these pagan nations. Now verse 15 tells us, Hagar bare Abram a son, and Abram called his son's name, which Hagar bare Ishmael which is exactly what the angel of the Lord said to call him. And when Abram had Ishmael, he was fourscore and six years old, or 86 years old. Now remember, when God first called Abram, he was 75 years old. So 11 years had passed since God has promised the heir to Abram. And so Abram, in trying to assist God in his plan, which we should never do, we should patiently wait upon the Lord, bears this son who literally is going to become a curse of the nations. They are going to become a people of war, cause great conflict upon the earth, and great hardship to many people. Now chapter 17 picks up and says, When Abram was 90 years old and 9, 99 years old, 24 years have passed since God first called Abram. And so the Lord appears to Abram and says unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. And that's where we're going to end today, friends, because the same call that the Almighty gave to Abraham thousands of years ago, he still gives to you and I today when he says, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be perfect. Be mature. Be complete. Be blameless be pure, ultimately be separate. And this is to be on the forefront of our minds each and every moment that we breathe, friends, that he is the almighty and we are creatures of his creation that have simply been called to pursue the things that are important to him and deny ourselves the things that are important to us. To walk before him with a pure heart in sincerity and truth. And as 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 and 18, and chapter 7, verse 1 tell us, Wherefore, come out from among them. Be different from the pagan nations around you. Be separate, saith the Lord. And do not touch the unclean thing. And I will receive you. I will be a father unto you. And you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Having therefore this promise, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness 
in the fear of our God. Oh, friends, I pray that that is what drives you to be counted faithful before the Lord, striving for perfection each and every day. And if and when you fail, simply bow your head in humility, confess your sin before him, and get up and begin all over once again. Well, friends, I truly love you, and I am so grateful that you are again with us today. I know what the Word of God, the study of the Word of God, and the reading of the Word of God is doing in my life. I can feel the flames of heaven burning within my soul. And I know that if this is what God is doing for me, He's doing it for you as well. So I share your joy this morning. And I encourage you, don't give up. Press deeper. Abide in your Lord Jesus and experience all the blessings that he has to offer you in this life now. As he wills and until next time, friends, I truly love you and I'll see you on the next video.